Great show. Welcome to Hannity. This is a Fox News alert. Florence continues to pound the Carolinas as we speak. Over 600,000 are now without power. Coastal areas have been devastated by flooding and the rain is not stopping anytime soon. And coming up, we're going to bring you live reports from the ground. But first, we have a lot of breaking news today and the media has most of it wrong and they're not covering the important stuff. Paul Manafort did agree to cooperate with the Office of Special Counsel. But despite what you're hearing from the destroy Trump left-wing press, the plea deal, it doesn't have to do with the president at all. Nothing to do with the 2016 campaign at all. Nothing to do with Russian collusion at all. But tonight we can report the deep state house of cards is tumbling. And tonight also we have more damning struck page texts that have been uncovered. We will share with you. And the level of corruption we now see is beyond shocking. And tonight I'm going to explain why Robert Mueller has no choice but to end his witch hunt and how if he doesn't, he will forever destroy great institutions in this country like the FBI, the DOJ, the CIA and more. The choice, the power is in his hands. Also tonight, we have an update to bring you on the Democrats' dirty tactics, last minute tactics to block the, block the Kavanaugh confirmation. We have a brand new media blitz from Democratic savior. Yes, the great one is back, Barack Obama. Yes, the anointed one. You're going to see what is the veiled cheap shots that he's taken at Fox News and talk radio. So sit tight, buckle up. It's time for tonight's Friday edition opening monologue. All right, Florence keeps pounding the Carolinas. It is still extremely dangerous. And joining us now with a quick update on the ground in North Topsail Beach, North Carolina, is Hurricane Steve Harrigan. Steve. Sean, this part of the coast has simply been pounded for the past 30 hours. We've seen more than 20 inches of rain and wind strong enough to shear off the roofs of houses close to that beach line. Finally, we're getting some break in the action, just a light rain and a light breeze. That's going to make it a lot easier for first responders to do their job, and that job is growing as the water keeps rising. The police chief here says they are going out at first light to try and see areas they have been unable to get to. The roads here are still very treacherous, down power lines, water and debris, so it's going to be the start of a long cleanup and rescue operation at first light. Sean, back to you. All right, Steve, I don't think anyone's getting gas at that BP station anytime soon. All right, for everybody, please stay safe. We'll have more coverage throughout the show. But first, the left-wing destroy Trump media is so quick. Remember, lavishing so much praise on Bob Woodward and his new anti-Trump book. Now, this is a book with, of course, unnamed anonymous sources, over 100 of them. But today, he threw them a bit of a curveball. I don't think they're going to be reporting this on the other channels. I'm just guessing. Take a look. Did you, Bob Woodward, hear anything in your research and in your interviews that sounded like espionage or collusion? Uh, I did not. And, uh, of course, I, I looked for it, looked for it hard. And uh, so, you know, there we are. We're, we're going to see what Mueller has. And Dowd may be right. He has something that Dowd and the president don't know about a secret witness or somebody who has uh, changed their testimony, as you know, that often happens and that can break open or turn a case. But you've seen no collusion. I have not. Yeah, he looked hard. That's right. No evidence of collusion because there was no collusion. Also today, we learned that Paul Manafort is not going to face a second trial. He did plead guilty to two counts of conspiracy. He has now agreed to cooperate with the Department of Justice. And naturally, many in the media on the left, they've been out there reporting and predicting doom and gloom for President Trump over this. Unfortunately for them, those characterizations couldn't be further from the truth. Listen to Manafort's attorney from earlier today. Tough day for Mr. Manafort, but he's accepted responsibility, and uh, he wanted to make sure that his family was able to remain safe and uh, live a good life. He's accepted responsibility, and this is for conduct that dates back many years, and everybody should remember that. Everybody should remember that. These charges are old, old charges, completely predating 2016, the presidential election. Now, the president's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, who will join us tonight in just a minute, he released a statement. It says, quote, once again, an investigation is concluded with a plea having nothing to do with President Trump or the Trump campaign. The reason the president did nothing wrong. Let me reiterate. 
multiple sources have confirmed to me and others tonight that in spite of what the media is reporting, this guilty plea has nothing to do with the campaign, Trump, or any collusion with Russia. We have numerous sources confirming to us tonight. Instead, it has everything to do with Manafort not paying federal taxes on millions of dollars, and which he made as an unregistered lobbyist for Ukraine's former uh, pro-Russian president. The Daily Caller is reporting tonight that Manafort's cooperation has nothing to do with Russia in collusion with the special counsel and has a lot more to do with a man by the name of Tony Podesta. He's the brother of Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta. He's a founder of a once very large lobbying organization called the Podesta Group. And according to the Manafort indictment, if the media would ever take the time to read it, various employees of companies A and B understood that they were receiving direction from Manafort and, yes, that president of Ukraine. And the Daily Report is, uh, Caller is reporting that Company B is the Podesta Group. Politico is reporting that a letter from the Justice Department shows that Podesta knew that Manafort was working at the direction of the Ukrainian government. And even the New York Fake News Times is reporting, quote, Mr. Manafort could also be instrumental in investigations now underway of lobbyists and influence brokers who work with him in Ukraine, including, New York Times says it, Tony Podesta, a prominent Democratic lobbyist. Ben Weber, former Republican member of Congress, and Greg Craig, you may remember him from the impeachment days, former White House counsel in the administration of President Barack Obama, and he represented Bill Clinton back in the day. Now, we reached out to Tony Podesta, his lawyers, for comment. As of tonight, we've not heard back. And that's not all. More bad news from Democrats coming out of the Manafort probe. Breaking just moments ago, we now have learned that federal prosecutors are weighing whether or not to charge former Obama White House counsel, Greg Craig. Why? For failing to register as a foreign agent. Now, Mueller is now moving away from the fabricated accusations of so-called Trump-Russia collusion and pursuing other leads. Well, it might finally be a good sign that we might in this country possibly be returning to equal justice and equal application of our laws. This witch hunt may actually be coming to an end sooner than we thought. And there's one other reason that Mueller made this deal with Manafort today. Now, to be very blunt, there is now in this country a cancer. It is now growing on every single intelligence agency that we once respected in this country. We're now at a tipping point. As a result of all of the corruption, it's taken a long time that we have exposed on this show, including all week this week, at the highest levels, corruption in the FBI, the DOJ, the CIA, and even corruption leading straight from Steele, Christopher Steele, to Bruce Orr, right into Robert Mueller's office, every single institution main institutions of law enforcement in this country have been so tainted by corruption, so tainted by a desire to take down the president. If Mueller cares at all about the future integrity of these institutions, this all needs to come to an end because these once great institutions tonight are hanging in the balance and we have all the evidence to prove that they've been corrupt, a deep state based on a deep hatred and a deep bias. Example after example how these institutions uh, broke the law, abused their power, how they have been proven corrupt at the highest levels of these institutions, using their power to favor one candidate over another, trying desperately to destroy Trump before the election, trying to destroy him after he elected, trying to undo a, a presidential election in this country, a duly elected president of we the people. And in some cases, real, actual, true collusion. Remember, this all starts, you can all trace it back to Hillary Clinton, her campaign, funneling money through a law firm, Fusion, GPS, taking the money, paying ex-foreign spy Christopher Steele. They put together a phony dossier. Now we know filled with Russian lies and propagandas, rumors and misinformation. Steele himself won't even stand behind his own dossier under oath. He said, oh, no, I can't say if it's true or not. Maybe 50-50. That's when he was under the threat of perjury in an interrogatory in Great Britain. That dossier was then passed off to the highest levels of the DOJ and the FBI. And then after the FBI people that we know, Comey, Strzok, and others, 
after they put the fix in on the Clinton investigation. We know she broke the law. We know she violated the Espionage Act. We know she obstructed justice. Well, they exonerated their chosen candidate, Hillary, anyway. Then they used her campaign op research from Russia that she paid for the dirty dossier as the basis of an investigation into so-called Trump-Russia collusion. None of them ever verified or corroborated any of their contents. The FBI, the DOJ, used the dossier to obtain multiple FISA warrants against a Trump campaign associate. Now we've learned all week they were leaking the contents of that dossier to you, the American people, before the election to influence a presidential election, after the election, through 2017, to destroy a duly elected president in the Trump administration. These are facts. The evidence is overwhelming and incontrovertible. Mueller, are you paying attention? All of this based on Clinton bought and paid for Russian lies. The FBI, the DOJ, they covered for her, they spread her lies, and now irreparable damage to some of the greatest institutions in American history are hanging in the balance tonight. And tonight, yet again, we have brand new, just unearthed text messages between Strzok and Page. By the way, I hear there's more coming next week which show even more leaking to the press of nothing but dossier, phony lies and misinformation. We've been reporting all week that Strzok and Page, you know, that they've been doing this and we have the text messages to prove it. By the way, CNN got late into the game tonight. Welcome aboard. You're only a year and a half too late. And they actually uncovered the text we've been telling you about all week. Welcome to actual journalism for five seconds, fake news CNN. Look at this text from Lisa Page to Peter Strzok, the date December 2016. At that point, President-elect Trump, both Trump haters, they wrote, quote, it will make your head spin to realize how many stories we played a personal role in. Next up, text, January 2017. It's even more damning. Sitting with Bill watching fake news CNN. I added that part. A ton more out. Hey, let me know when you can talk. We're discussing whether now that this is out, we use it as a pretext to go interview some people. So what you see here is an obvious effort from Strzok and Page, not only to leak information, then use that leak information to justify further investigations and intimidation of other people. Exactly what we've been telling you for over a year. And there's more. Look at this text. It's April 27, 2017. It shows even more damning evidence of leaking. Well, it's going to be very apparent we cooperated and gave access a lot for that article that I think is going to be very negative. Add all of this to what we have been reporting for a year and earlier this week where Strzok and Page were, were texting about their media leak strategy. They were also working together on a Russian interference op-ed in the lead-up to the 2016 election. We also learned, thanks to Catherine Herridge, the FBI's sisters in the CIA that were, quote, leaking like mad after the election, that were on a vendetta. Well, that was the CIA, of course, leaking to the press, lying to numerous FISA court judges, colluding with a, a foreign spy with deep Russian ties, propagating Russian lies, this is real. This is serious. These are crimes. By the way, if this special counsel won't investigate it, we need a special counsel that will. If Mueller's inquiry wraps up without addressing any of this, well, here's what Lindsey Graham had to say about this very topic. Take a look. What I wish Jeff would talk about, I wish some of my colleagues would talk more about, is what's going on in the Department of Justice and the FBI. I'm going to send a letter today to Rosenstein. These new text messages from Strzok and Page about leaking information about the FISA warrant uh, process to the media is just one in a series of events that scream for special counsel. How much more has to be uncovered at the Department of Justice regarding a political agenda? The Department of Justice and the FBI were political operatives when it came to Trump. They weren't investigators. And this screams for a special counsel. So I, I agree with Jeff. You shouldn't beat on Sessions personally. But I don't know why Rosenstein, who's in charge of this process, doesn't see what I see, an out-of-control Department of Justice and FBI, and what's good for the goose is good for the, for the gander. Let's have a DOJ investigated by somebody outside the Department of Justice. So tonight what he's saying, what we're saying is the same. The integrity of some of the greatest institutions in American history, our FBI, our Intelligence Committee, 
the Department of Justice, our CIA, if we can't trust them, if we don't resolve this abuse of power, if people aren't held accountable, we will lose this constitutional republic. That's how serious this is. We're going to have a lot more reaction to the latest deep state developments. Greg Jarrett, Sarah Carter coming up, Rudy Giuliani coming up. But we also have an update on the looming Supreme Court confirmation of Judge Kavanaugh. Last night, well, we first reported Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein's Hail Mary attempt at the last minute to destroy Kavanaugh's reputation. She issued what was a cryptic statement about alleged misconduct from Kavanaugh, so-called from an anonymous source that didn't want to be known, dating back to when Kavanaugh was in high school. In other words, in the 1980s, Feinstein said that she reported the allegation to the FBI. Kavanaugh has been investigated 30 times by the FBI and has been investigated the whole time. And they're declining to investigate. Now, this charge was made public after Kavanaugh's public hearings, after all of his private meetings with Democrats, and months after Feinstein first learned about the so-called alleged misconduct. She also met privately with Kavanaugh and never asked him about it. Now, as the Wall Street Journal's Kimberly Strassel noted, Feinstein suddenly thought the charges were serious enough to refer to the FBI, but apparently not serious enough to ask him a single question about it during his testimony. And Judge Kavanaugh is just days away from being confirmed. He refuted all of these claims, and he wrote, quote, I categorically, unequivocally deny this allegation. I did not do this back in high school or at any time. And by the way, there were 65 other women that he knew at that time that spoke up in favor of his character, including another person supposedly mentioned in the letter said it's not true. What you're seeing from Feinstein is an embarrassing, blatant attempt to smear and slander the character of Judge Kavanaugh. And it's not the only sad moment from the Senate's Democrats attempt to block Trump's Supreme Court nominee. Remember when Senator Cory Booker himself, comparing himself to a Roman gladiator, Spartacus, for threatening to release the documents to the public, except he was told he could release them because they were already released. Watch this. I, I openly invite and accept the consequences of my team releasing that email right now. This is about the closest I'll probably ever have in my life to an I am Spartacus moment. Yeah, I am Spartacus had all the information ahead of time, was told he can release it ahead of time. After getting resoundingly mocked for over a week over that ridiculous statement, Booker is now walking back his heroic comparisons. As it turns out, he's not Spartacus. He's a far left politician from New Jersey who would love to see the Democrats take back the Senate. He thinks he's gonna be president one day. And now Democrats across America have unveiled their secret weapon for the midterms. That would be Barack Obama. Unfortunately for Democrats, only 38% of the American people want to see him back on the campaign trail. And just, by the way, as we saw over and over during his eight long, hard, difficult years in office, Obama is now using the same corrosive politics of division that he used back in the day. Yesterday, taking a shot at his favorite target, conservatives, talk radio, Fox News forces of retrenchment and backlash and, and, and anger are constantly being fanned. And we've got, frankly, some media outlets that like to do the fanning. If you're willing to get involved and knock on some doors and talk to your friends, talk to some of those family members, talk to, talk to Aunt Jane, who sometimes, you know, is listening to the wrong radio programs. Yeah, get in their face, he once said. He once said, we'll send Mr. Burgess over to Sean Hannity. He'll tear him up. All right, well, stop whining, Mr. Obama. Those were your words to President Trump in 2016. In 53 days, you, the American people, you have the power. You get to decide. You'll get the government you deserve. And that means whether or not Obama's cronies get their power back or whether the Trump agenda continues with its success. Here now with reaction to all this breaking news tonight, the author of the New York Times bestseller, The Russian Hoax. He is a Fox News legal analyst, Greg Jarrett. It's number one on the New York Times list. And Fox News investigative reporter and contributor, Sarah Carter. Sarah, this is now five straight days in a row, and I'm told more struck page messages. There's over 50,000 of them are coming out next week that are even more damning than the reveals about the media leak strategy and everything else. Here's my question. Am I right? that tonight the institutions that are so great in the minds of most Americans, including my own, the FBI, the Department of Justice, the CIA, the intel community, 
Are they hanging in the balance based on the abuse of power of some at the highest level that now we have incontrovertible evidence about? Sean, I've spoken to a number of former very high level uh, intelligence officials and current uh, law enforcement officials, and they say that's absolutely the case. This is hanging in the balance because all of this evidence, this isn't just circumstantial anymore. We're actually seeing the facts on its face point to one thing and one thing only, that this was a deception operation from the very beginning. And let me explain that a little bit. A deception operation is what CIA is trained to do over overseas. It's what the Russians do to other countries. But instead, it appears that the FBI and possibly members of the CIA were doing it right here in the United States to their own government. So there needs to be a special counsel. They said there needs to be a thorough investigation. Lindsey Graham is right. There needs to be somebody outside of the DOJ to investigate this, because the one thing we can't have happen in our country is have our own agencies, agencies that we entrust ourselves to, our lives to, actually working covertly against their own government and against the people of the United know. States. Greg, and this is the, the whole premise of your book, the illicit scheme to elect Hillary Clinton destroy Donald Trump. This is what it's all about. That's right. But who are the people destroying? We got the highest levels. We've got Strzok, we've yeah. got Page, we've got Comey, we've got McCabe, we've got Orr, we've got uh, Sally Yates, we've got sure. all these people. They all have one thing in common. They hate Trump. And it goes right into the special counsel's office himself because Steele texting Bruce Orr, oh, did you get my information over to the special counsel, your contacts there? So it's the institutions of law enforcement, the FBI, the DOJ, the CIA, the intel community, and the special counsel's office. How can anybody in this country have faith in the rule of law now that all of these institutions have been tainted, not by rank and file, but by the highest people with the most power? You're correct that there was a cancer in our government. It's still there. It became malignant under Obama's Department of Justice and James Comey's FBI, John Brennan's CIA, James Clapper's DNI. And it's still going on. Just look at the text messages that we receive today. Struck and Page are obsessed and transfixed with their quote unquote personal role in leaking and shaping stories. And then they're bragging that now we can use this as a pretext to interview people. It's not only mendacious and devious, but to the extent they were leaking highly classified information, and they surely were, it is a crime. I'm no fan of a special counsel, but, but if you have a special counsel somewhere. for Trump, you gotta have a special counsel for the investigators who are breaking mm -hmm. the law with impunity. Absolutely. I gotta believe somewhere in the office, in the mind, of Robert Mueller, somewhere there's got to be some sense of truth in all of this, and that all of this evidence, all of this abuse of power, he's got to understand at some point that all of these agencies now will be permanently, if not irreparably, damaged in all of this, Sarah. Yes, and the one thing that he needs to do, and, and you know, we've spoken to a number of lawmakers who have said the same thing. He needs to wrap up the special counsel investigation, which was based off of false, unverified information. Look, all of this was a pretext, Sean. They built a narrative, and then they tried to support that narrative. When I tell you this is a deception operation, that means they thought about this from the beginning. They were going to try to find a way to try to connect President Trump to Russia, even if it was based on false information. They leaked that to the media. The irony, they though, leaked. is the Hillary irony. was the connection. Hillary paid right. for the Russian lies that got everybody in trouble because yeah. they all Absolutely. wanted to protect her. These people loved Hillary Clinton. They hated Donald Trump. He was a threat to their positions of power. So they went about conjuring, based on false evidence, a hoax to frame him. And I, I detail it in my book, but every day new evidence comes out that corroborates the Russia hoax. All right, mm -hmm. I gotta let you both go. Uh, great information. Next week is going to be a bombshell week. Look at me, we've not been wrong yet. Sarah, Greg, thank you. Also tonight, Hurricane Florence continues to wreak havoc in the Carolinas, a lot of damage there. For more, we bring in Fox News Chief Meteorologist Rick uh, Reichmuth is with us. Uh, you were right, we were right. It's now stopped and it's now literally dropping inches and inches and inches of rain and it's not seemingly gonna stop anytime soon. 
Yeah, we've got about two feet of rain, two feet of rain uh, in Moorhead City. This is a look at the last 24 hours of the satellite. Uh, we started getting rain about 30 hours ago, and the storm has moved about 150 miles as all in the last 30 hours. So uh, an incredibly slow moving storm. You can see on the radar picture, not moving much at all. We've got flooding going on. You see these gauges. Here's our big concern. These are the rivers that are at major flooding. That's the purple. Uh, moderate flooding is the red. Take a look at what happens over the next five days, Sean. It completely gets uh, major flooding going on down across South Carolina, North Carolina, in across parts of Virginia because of the rain that's going to fall, that's going to go down into all the rivers, and we're going to be seeing a lot of rivers well above their record levels that they've ever seen, uh, and it'll likely stay that way for a good part of, say, five to six days. Here's a satellite image from this. You can see right there, finally, the center of it has moved in across parts of South Carolina. Myrtle Beach still in offshore flow, so water going away from the ocean, but anywhere to the east of that, still seeing this onshore flow. That's where it came on shore, 7.15 this morning. We're 14 hours away, and it's moved 60 miles. We're also still seeing that energy up across uh, areas towards uh, the Outer Banks. And take a look at this. A lot of areas, Sean, over 20 inches so far. Probably about another 20 inches to go before we're done. All right, Rick Reichmuth in the Fox Weather Center tonight. And our thoughts and prayers go to the people in the Carolinas and elsewhere. We go now to Leland Vittert. He's in Moorhead City in North Carolina. Uh, I watched you nearly get blown over a few times. Hope you're holding up okay. Well, Sean, it's certainly a lot better 24 hours later. This is really the first lull we have seen in this storm now in 24 hours. Uh, Rick was talking about 24 inches of rain in Moorhead City. We have been outside for most of those 24 inches of rain, and the effects have been devastating. I talked to a captain who plies these waters. Actually, his boat is normally tied up uh, right here. It's up in dry dock. He said there are parts of the waters around here, those rivers upstream that Rick was talking about, that people can't even get to. He said that are absolutely devastated uh, so far, and we haven't even begun to really see the high water that is about to come in the next couple of days. It's very easy at a time like this when you stand out, the storm sort of passed, or you're between bands, and you go, oh, well, it doesn't look so bad. You know, the docks behind you aren't trashed. And you then take about another 24 to 48 hours and realize the lives that have been totally upended by this storm. It is going to be extensive damage. The damage will continue now over the next couple of days before we can even get to a lot of the areas that the hardest hit. Obviously, we've already had a number of fatalities here. The oak trees that are so famous here in North Carolina have turned deadly when they snapped and flew into a house. It's also really hampering a lot of the rescue efforts because the ground has become so saturated by this rain and will continue to become so saturated that even the wind that we're feeling now that ordinarily wouldn't be that terrible is enough to snap and uproot some of these oak trees. They fall over totally block traffic. Each one of those trees had to be clear, has to be cleared before fire, police, power crews can come back in and also cell phone tower crews to clean stuff up, Sean. All right, Leland Vittert, hang in there. I know you need some sleep. Uh, great job, as always. We switch gears now to the major news out of Washington today. Former Trump campaign manager Paul Manafort had a deal with Robert Mueller's special counsel investigation. Joining us now with reaction, the president's on the president's perspective on the matter is his attorney, Rudy Giuliani, former New York City mayor. Mr. Mayor, good to see you on the good Manafort you, issue. Um, I have been told by numerous and multiple sources close to Manafort and others that, in fact, whatever cooperation is going to take place is not what is being reported. It would have nothing to do with the campaign, Donald Trump, Russia, collusion of any kind, but more to do with lobbying and other groups. Well, Sean, that's absolutely true. I mean, the reality is there was a quote put out by a source close to Manafort that the plea agreement has and the cooperation agreement has nothing to do with the Trump campaign. Quote, there is no evidence of collusion. Now, I know that because I've been privy to a lot of facts I can't repeat. But the reality is no evidence of collusion. All you have to do is look, look at the plea. The plea is to crimes that have to do with Manafort's past. No involvement with President Trump, no involvement with the campaign, no involvement with Russia. And by the way, there's also no evidence of obstruction. There have been four guilty pleas now, and they're completely irrelevant. Mueller Do you agree a, with me, Mr. Mayor? 
you know, I, look, I know you not only as New York City's mayor, but you were one of the toughest prosecutors in the Southern District of New York. Um, uh, you were right there putting your life on the line, taking down some of the, the toughest crime families in the country at the time. But do you agree with me that the integrity of institutions no. like the FBI, the CIA, and the DOJ, and the intel community are now hanging in a balance? Because what have we discovered here? that the FBI first got Hillary off the hook, they fixed what were obvious crimes she committed, that they were involved in spreading propaganda, misinformation through her bought and paid for dossier, that they also used it to get a FISA warrant, they lied to FISA court judges and committed her fraud on the court, but the level of leaking and lying and conspiracy to hurt then candidate Trump and then President Trump, it's all here. We have the information, there is evidence. There's no question about it. Here, here's the collusion, uh, strangely, uh, Sean. The collusion is that whole group of people, uh, Strzok, Page, Orr, Orr's wife, Comey, Brennan, Clapper, uh, they decided to tr first keep him out of the White House. So we get the dossier paid for by Hillary Clinton, a million dollars, by the way, to pay for the phony thing. Never re revealed properly to the court, by the way, completely fraudulent Pfizer wires, leaked illegally, now admitted, total crime, as Greg Jarrett points out, both in his book and now with you. And then finally, when they failed in that mission, they just transitioned right into trying to drive him out of the White House. And yeah. so this is, not a, this is not an investigation based on any facts. There's never been a single fact produced that President Trump in any way colluded with anybody, much less conspired but, with anybody. But Mr. Mayor. The man is we, totally innocent. We do know the FBI. We do know the DOJ. We do know that the then DNI, we know the CIA, all had a media leak strategy, all related to destroying Donald Trump before the election, after the election. And not only that, with all due respect, I guess you got to do business with a guy I don't. But when we look at the messages from Steele to Bruce Orr, his wife, of course, worked for Fusion GPS, but Christopher Steele, who put all the Russian lies together, paid for by Hillary, he's talking about praying he doesn't get exposed. He's also talking about firewalls holding. Struck and Page talk about an insurance policy. But then Steele tells Orr, asking Orr, hey, did you get the information that we now know are fabricated lies from Russia? Did you get him into the special counsel's office? That goes into Robert Mueller's office. He's can, now tainted I, I, by I this whole thing. I can guarantee you that if there's the same relentless uh, pursuit of these people as they've done to President Trump, uh, you're going to find very quickly already admitted evidence of serious crimes and a major conspiracy to first stop him from being president and then to create circumstances where there'd be an impeachment. And uh, this is uh, my head hangs in, in, in shame for the department that I gave uh, 16 years of my life to the Department of Justice as the third ranking official in the Department of Justice, when I could proudly say it was a Department of Justice. And the only thing that could be done now is as relentless an investigation of all these people as they did to President Trump. All right, Mr. Mayor, thank you for being thank with you. us. We appreciate it. When we come back, Trace Gallagher has a live update, the Democrats' 11th hour attempt to smear, slander, besmirch the character of Judge Kavanaugh and his confirmation. That and more on this busy, breaking Friday news night. A lot of questions being raised about Senator Dianne Feinstein waiting to reveal the so-called secret letter that she had about an allegation against Judge Kavanaugh from when he was in high school like 1980, an allegation Judge Kavanaugh categorically denies, as well as 65 other women that knew him back in the day, as well as another person apparently whose name was mentioned in this case. Joining us now, though, first with a, from our West Coast newsroom with an update, Trace Gallagher. Trace, what do you got on this? Well, you have to remember, Sean, Diane Feinstein got this letter back in July. She then met with Brett Kavanaugh, questioned him twice during the confirmation hearings, and sent written follow-up questions and never one time raised the issue. Feinstein now says she was trying to protect the woman's anonymity. The letter has been given to White House counsel Don McGahn, as well as senators on Capitol Hill, though it's unclear how many senators have actually read it. The accusation is from an unnamed woman who claims Brett Kavanaugh tried to force himself on her in a locked room at a high school 
school party some 35 years ago. Kavanaugh says, quoting, I categorically and unequivocally deny this allegation. I did not do this back in high school or at any time. Republicans are rallying behind Kavanaugh. As you mentioned, Senate Judiciary Chair Chuck Grassley today released that letter signed by 65 women who knew Brett Kavanaugh back in high school, defending him as a good person. And while some liberal groups are calling on Kavanaugh to withdraw, Democratic senators, at least so far, have been mostly quiet about the issue. So, too, have swing vote Republican senators Susan Collins of Maine and Lisa Murkowski of Alaska. Senator Grassley, by the way, says the confirmation process will go forward as scheduled. Sean. All right, Trace Gallagher in our L.A. newsroom tonight. Thank you. Here with reaction to all tonight's breaking news. All of it, American Conservative Union Chairman Matt Slap, Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi. Pam, we'll start with you. She had this letter in June. She met with him privately. Uh, the woman doesn't want to be disclosed, didn't want to take it any further, doesn't want to go public. Uh, another person apparently was mentioned in this letter said it's false. 65 right. other people say that's not the guy we knew. Um, why didn't she bring it up with him or bring it up in the hearings if it was something that she was so concerned about? Well, she would have, Sean. Um, this is a, a, a horrible, preposterous attempt to discredit a good man legally as a career prosecutor. It would not stand any merit, none. And that's why the FBI is refusing to open it. Nothing, nothing legally could be done about this. It's ridiculous. Morally, it's horrible that they're doing this. This is a good man with a wife and two young daughters. Ultimately, though, they will see their father on the U.S. Supreme Court and that good prevailed. Personally, I know Brett Kavanaugh, but better than I, my solicitor general was a Kavanaugh clerk, along with many other men and women who think the world of this man. And my, my solicitor general says he is of the utmost integrity and he worked by that man's side every day. Matt, how do you see it? Well, you know, I've, uh, Mercy and I have known Brett for 20 years. Uh, we worked in the White House with him. We By got the way, to be... Mercedes Schlapp is who you Mercy. Most people don't know Mercedes as Mercy. And, you know, she she absolutely got the worst part of that deal. I'm just saying. Well, let me know. Brett Kavanaugh knows her, and we worked closely with him. And I was with her at dinner tonight, and she said, please tell Sean and tell Sean's viewers how repulsed we are by this by what a mm -hmm. good and decent man he is how wonderful his wife is what a wonderful family they have and that what's important to know here is that when you know somebody's character so deeply like i have the fortune to know in the case of brett kavanaugh you know what motivates them and he's not a perfect person none of us are but he's a wonderful person and he's a wonderfully talented person and this is a tactic and they had no other choice because of what harry reid did with the filibuster and because of the stupidity of those hearings and 300 people getting arrested and acting like kindergartners that they are going back to with a tactic about a time when this man was a boy and they are trying to do anything they can to derail him and i just want everybody listening to the show to know that i could not think of a person on the globe who could be a better representative of American values and the things we care about than Brett Kavanaugh. And I'm telling you that this is a tactic, this is false, and the American people will not let, let me this go back. happen. Let me go back, Pam, to our earlier discussion about, I believe tonight hanging in the balance is the credibility of some of the greatest institutions we have. You work with them as a Florida Attorney General. I don't like talking right. badly about the FBI, the CIA, the intel community in this country, or the, the DI, uh, Director of National Intelligence, but we all know now beyond any That's doubt That's <laughs> that there was at the highest levels, not rank and file, abuse of power and corruption right. and law breaking That's right. and spreading of That's lies right. and leaking lies mm -hmm. at every level. H how do we fix this at this point? Uh, well, Sean, hopefully it's being fixed with the grand jury being impaneled. And you've been saying this all along from day one. And what the American people have to remember, we are a nation of laws and no one is above the law, especially the highest levels of the FBI. And there are thousands of great men and women of the FBI who are out there working tirelessly every day. And I know many of them are disgusted by the reputation that's all happening that to the FBI because of an elite few. Yeah, I mean, Matt, you see these th th these text messages. You see what they were doing before Disgusting. and after the election. This, and at the heart of it all is Clinton corruption and her Russian bought and paid for lies. And it even seeps right into Robert Mueller's office vis-a-vis -vis Christopher Steele and, of course, his conduit, Bruce Orr. 
Yeah, I mean, there has to be a water's edge on political disagreements, right? We're seeing this with the Supreme Court. We're seeing this with what happened at the very top echelon of the FBI. There, it doesn't seem to be that as a country we can just have political disagreements. You have to do things. The left has to do things like try to corrupt the greatest law enforcement institution the world has ever known, the FBI. 99.9% .9 of the people working there are wonderful, talented patriots. And what they did was repugnant. And you know what, Sean, I think what I hear most when I go around the country is they always say, how come nobody's in jail? This is the worst corruption, political it's, corruption it's we've ever seen. Abuse of power ever. And Robert Mueller is not doing anything about it. He was the former FBI director. He needs to fix it and clean up the mess, get out the bad actors, and save these great institutions with great people that do work in them. All right, thank Amen. you both. When we come back, Dr. Gorka, Larry Elder, they'll weigh in on the left's shameless attempt to actually use the storm and the hurricane to score cheap political points against Trump. You can't make this crap up, but it's real. Visual. All right, the left has its common practice. They will use anything, everything to try and attack President Trump. Now they're even using the hurricane that's been hammering the Carolinas to criticize the president. They're saying he's complicit with the hurricane, and it gets worse than that. Take a look. We have a president that is denying the impacts of of uh, of, you know, this hurricane season last year and this year and actively making um, making the problem worse um, by, you know, not um, addressing this this root cause of, of worsening storms. President Trump says FEMA is ready for Hurricane Florence, but mounting evidence suggests it could be incredibly difficult to deal with this disaster if climate change deniers are on the front lines of emergency response. I think you're elevating Trump to evil, uh, whereas uh, having raised three kids, I just think he's a giant toddler uh, with no real connection to reality and no sense of empathy or responsibility. He came across as almost gleeful and excited about the hurricane and how big it was and how tremendously wet it's going to be and all these absurd things that came out of his mouth. But according to two Harvard scientists, Trump's environmental policies could lead to an additional 80,000 unnecessary deaths every decade. Here with Reaction Salem, Nationals, nationally syndicated radio host Larry Elder, the author of the bestseller coming out, Why We Fight, our friend, Fox News, national security strategist, Dr. Sebastian Gorka, Larry I, I, I guess he is complicit. He has such a close relationship with God that he conspired with God and maybe <laughs> Putin, too, to, well, to build a hurricane that's going to hurt well, innocent people. That's how sick they've gotten. Well, Sean, this is all about uh, portraying Trump not only as uh, incompetent, not only as a climate change denier, but as racist. Remember what they did to George W. Bush? Uh, Kanye West, during a fundraiser, said George W. Bush doesn't care about black people. Representative Barney Fife called George Bush's response to Katrina uh, ethnic cleansing by inaction. Uh, and just recently, one of the uh, pundits on CNN said that if 3,000 white people had died during the Puerto Rican uh, storms, Trump would not have called that a success. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Trump is a racist, only cares about white people. It is absolutely outrageous, but it's what the left does. Well, just like uh, an election, you know, this is a white lash. I mean, that was the reaction on fake news CNN. You remember well, <laughs> Dr. Right. Gorka, because I think you compared them to the Cartoon Network at the time. <laughs> I did, and CNN and Anderson Cooper will never forgive me. But hey, ratings are ratings. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're desperate, Sean, because there is no evidence of collusion. Even Bob Woodward's book couldn't find any evidence. So now Donald Trump is colluding with God and with the, 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 the gods of the weather. It, it's absurd. And every quote you just had, all of those clips, none of those people, none of them know Donald Trump like you know him like I know him. He is driven above all else by one thing, Sean, by keeping Americans alive and keeping them safe, whether it's crushing ISIS, whether it's staunching the flow of MS-13 across our border, stopping the op opioid ep epidemic. Well, let me ask These you people. Well, a serious question. I don't know if people have understand what's at stake in 53 days. Do you think they get it? Do you think the people that voted for Trump, are they going to go out and are they going to protect the House and Senate from Nancy Pelosi and company? Well, Larry, we'll start with you. Uh, I think I think they will. I, I think uh, Republicans are, are getting energized. They realize what's at stake. And we know what's at stake. The first day uh, when the uh, Democrats take